Hi, this is Tyler from Aftertouch Audio. Next-gen consoles are out, and I've been absolutely addicted to the new Cold War zombies. Through my dozens of hours play, there's one weapon in particular that has really caught my ear from a sound designer's perspective, and that bad boy is the D.I.E. machine. When I start designing weapon sounds, I usually look at the weapon's anatomy, figure out what kind of projectile is being shot, the material the gun is made out of, small moving parts, the power source, and a litany of other details that go into making my sounds. The beauty of the weapon like the DIE machine is that you've never seen a weapon like this, so you have the maximum amount of creativity, and can make the weapon sound like whatever you like. All right. But the DIE machine in particular presents a unique challenge for the sound design team. Not only does this weapon have five different ammo types, wind, fire, electricity, ice, and poison, but it also has a sixth ability which allows you to restore ammo by sucking up zombie souls. I like to call this ability the suck, and this is the particular ability that we're going to be focusing on in today's video. Stick around to the end of the video as I have some really cool announcements for the channel. Let me quickly play a short example of the suck ability and try and think of some challenging sounds to create for this weapon. Also, jot down any physical elements that you notice that you might want to highlight throughout your sound. The physical elements that I would like to highlight in my redesign are the rattle of the gun, the electronic moving parts, the spinning fan, and then I would like to create a slowly rising turbine sound that lets the player know that you are charging the device. This is where the challenging part lies. To create seamless loops, we normally cut the audio somewhere in the middle of the sound, move the beginning to the end, and apply a simple crossfade. This really only works with static sounds that don't drastically change timbre over time, and you can use some more advanced features like Snap to Zero Crossing if your DAW supports it, but with a sound that is constantly rising, it is doing anything but staying static. So looping the sound becomes a little bit more challenging without being blaringly obvious, but nothing is impossible. There is a way to create a forever rising loop seamlessly. This slowly ever rising sound is called a shepherd's tone, and the Activision sound design team use of the shepherd's tone within the DIE machine has to be one of my favorite creative uses for the shepherd. Let's tackle the Shepherd Tone first, as Hans Zimmer's use of the Shepherd's Tone on Dunkirk back in 2017 kinda sparked a new light into this cool audio illusion. I'll throw my two cents in right quick and give you a download link in the description for a serum patch if you wanna just be lazy like myself. Basically speaking, we need four waves slowly rising in pitch and rising and falling in volume. We then need to offset each of the LFOs to create the Shepherd Tone. Now this is a very oversimplified explanation, but I have left two presets for Serum in the description below that will give you a basic Shepherd's Tone. If I make more presets for different synths, I'll leave them in the description below. To adjust the speed of the Shepherd, you will need to adjust the LFO in octaves. Head over to Serum's matrix section and you can increase or decrease the value by 12. You can also adjust the LFO frequency in all four LFOs and this will adjust the speed, but it won't affect the pitch. To make your life easier, make sure you have this bad boy ticked. Now once you have this beautiful tone playing and looping seamlessly, it's time to throw it through some distortion and other effects to get it sounding as you wish. Now that we have that set, let me show you another way that you can make a shepherd's tone, but with an audio sample, as I ended up using both methods in my redesign. For this, we need any static sound duplicated. For the best result, try picking a sample that has a higher sample rate. Basically what we need to have happen here is have both of the sounds rising in pitch by exactly an octave starting one octave apart. From here, we can have the highest sound and volume fall from 100% to 0%, and the lower octave sound go from 0 to 100%. Once you have that set up, you will need to do one more thing. Render the audio out and have a single file. Cut a small portion from the front and move it to the back, and apply a simple crossfade. You will need to play around with the crossfade's intensity in order to get this loop perfect, but you got this. I believe in you. Quick tip with the Shepherd's Tones, Play the finished sound in reverse and get an infinite falling sound. I usually make both when I'm designing shepherds as I can have as many options as possible in editing. I ended up creating a shepherd out of a turbine that was rising on a steady pace. I used the same techniques as above, but instead of using pitch controls, I used RPMs as I wanted to see if I can experiment with creating shepherds using different sources. The two sounds combined sound like this. Okay, now that we've got the hard part of the way, let's look at the other elements of the die machine. For the startup sound, I grabbed some switches, a rising synth element that went into the shepherd, 
and I also used the startup of the engine turning on that I made the shepherd's turn out of. This really helps rev into the sound. I also made sure to match the RPM that the shepherd starts at to really make sure that the transition loops seamlessly. The rattle and looping fan was pretty straightforward. I just grabbed some sounds from my lawnmower shaking, some junk metal being shaken gently, and a few different fans at various speeds, and I turned them into a seamless loop that lasts for 16 bars, which was the length of the shepherd's tone. I also wanted to add a sense of weight to the sound. And for this, I added a sound of a rocket taking off. I like to add different samples for different frequency layers as I'm not a huge fan of boosting the low end of sounds that don't have a good low end presence to begin with. I'd rather have each part clean and controllable. For the power down sound, I use some foley of some guns moving and a power down sound which I made out of a synth and the turbine being turned off. Now before I play the finished sound, it is super important that you place the sound in the context of your world. To do this, we use reverb, and since we're outside, I used a forced impulse response and mixed it in by a healthy amount. Here's the finished sound. Does it sound exactly the same as the original Die Machine? No, that was not really the point of this exercise. While I try to reference the original mix to get the right balance of each sound, I really try to make this gun my own. I wanted more rattling of the gun and I wanted it to feel much heavier than it was. I also wanted it to be more of a turbine instead of a tea kettle or a pressure cooker. If you are interested in some sound design tutorials, I've added some of my favorite sound design YouTubers to my channel section, so go show them some love. I'll keep this list growing as I find more sound design YouTubers, but for those of you sound designers that are looking for a little more, I've just launched a Patreon where you can get cool things like feedback on your work one-on-one -on -one Skype lessons where we can talk about just about anything you would like, and many, many more. I've left a link for that in the channel description below. If you liked the video, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button as it really helps out the channel, or as Graham Stephan would say, And of course, just as a friendly reminder, if you haven't already smashed that like button yet, make sure to do so, otherwise you're gonna get Ligma. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, now go make some noise.